Hey everybody, it's Jason Blahal with Ice Cream Fitness here. It is time for part two of the Monday Q&A. Let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Let's get into these questions. First question. The repeat bout effect tells us that you can train body parts every day and it would eventually adapt. How would it affect growth? If one would train his arms, for example, five times a week, meaning hit the while protein synthesis is still elevated. As long as you're recovering from it, and yes, you can continually adapt to the workload, it's not necessarily going to impede your recovery, but you may not actually see additional growth. I've seen data showing that for the individual, based upon a variety of genetic factors that we can't always determine ahead of time, people's optimal training frequency is going to be somewhere between twice a week and five times a week. And there might be very, very rare individuals at six or seven times a week, which we have seen with Olympic gold medalists, but we don't have data to back that, that I'm aware of. And this has been known for a couple of decades, this information that I'm talking about. You guys should be able to dig up studies from way before the internet even existed. But that tends to be your range, and so whatever your optimal range is, going beyond that, you're not going to see additional growth or performance most likely from it. So if it turns out it's around three times a week for you, those extra two sessions may not do anything for you in terms of growth. But by that same token, they may not hinder you as long as you're recovering from it. Your connective tissue is given adequate time to recover and rest. So it may come down to you're just wasting extra time, but it may not actually hinder you. And depending upon your genetics, it may not help you either. All right, next question. How to increase my lockout strength on the overhead press? Well, assuming you already do the overhead press and you work on it hard, normally I would tell people get stronger out of the bottom, faster out of the bottom and the lockout will improve. But assuming you're already military pressing quite a bit and you're missing lockouts and you're fairly strong out of the bottom, I'm gonna recommend you doing more heavy tricep work can help and also consider implementing push presses into your training cycle. Maybe alternate every other overhead press session that you do with push presses so that you get into the habit of locking a heavier weight at the top and using momentum out of the bottom. And that can actually help train your lockout a little bit on your overhead press also. So those two things in conjunction should help if you're already fairly strong on the overhead press and you're struggling with the lockouts. And if you're still weak on the overhead press, you need to just do more overhead pressing and learn to get faster with a pause off the bottom and train to be more explosively off the bottom and focus more on that and just do more overhead pressing to bring it up. So it really is going to depend on where your level of development is. All right, last question in this part. Who would win in a fight? Ian McCarthy versus Bagpuss. Well, considering that you guys have seen Bagpuss take me out like three times in videos already, although one of those videos is currently not visible to the public, and I will eventually discuss for you guys why in a long and lengthy detail with documentation. And considering that I am a power lifter, a lot stronger than Ian McCarthy, and I'm a fairly accomplished martial artist, so I'm not the best, but I have quite a few years of training under my belt. And Bagpuss has taken me out easily three times in a row, and you guys have seen it, so I think it's a no-brainer to say that Bagpuss could probably take Ian McCarthy. And he might even assert his dominance afterwards, you never know with Bagpuss. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.